Welcome to the 2016 Pacific Rim Championships, presented by Hershey's. Hello, happy, hello, Hershey's. Hello, happy, hello, Hershey's. Welcome to Xfinity Arena and the 2016 Pacific Rim Championships presented by Hershey's. This biennial gathering of elite athletes and Olympic hopefuls is one of the premier gymnastics events in the world. Tonight, we showcase the top junior and senior gymnasts from 18 countries around the Pacific Ocean, competing for both team and individual all-around gold. Let's meet the athletes. Competing on trampoline for senior women, Australia, Canada, Japan, Russian Federation, and USA. Competing on trampoline for senior men, Australia, Japan, Mexico, New Zealand, Russian Federation, and USA. Starting the artistic competition on vault, New Zealand. Starting on uneven bars, Japan. Starting off on balance beam, Team Canada. And starting off tonight's competition on floor exercise, United States of America. These are the competitors that have journeyed to Everett, Washington in their quest for a Pacific Rim Gymnastics Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise and remove your hats. Here to lead us in our singing of the Star Spangled Banner is Sue Ring. Can you see by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. 
So ring. Gymnasts will now prepare for their first competitive event in tonight's competition, the 2016 Pacific Rim Championships, presented by Hershey's. Here we go, here we go, come on, Everett, get on your feet! Oh, there we go. Gymnasts may now begin the warm up for rotation one. Please welcome our distinguished international panel of judges for tonight's competition. On the Superior Jury and on video review, we have from Australia, Helen Kalajuri, and from USA, Cheryl Hamilton. The officials on vault, Japan's Yoko Takahashi. From Singapore, Bei Chen. From Colombia, Natalia Lopez. From New Zealand, Karen Bevins. From Costa Rica, Tatiana Aguilar Montelegre. And from Canada, Sherry Wilson. The officials on an even bars include New Zealand's Jackie Godfrey. From Costa Rica, Diana Diok. From Australia, Alana Slater. From Japan, Shihiro Surakawa. From Singapore, Lim Hee Mue. And from Canada, Natalie Turner. On balance sheet. Sure. So, um, if you, yeah, if you look at the assets, that was, uh -huh. are you looking at the right one? It's me, yeah. Uh, sorry about that. There must be love down in the heart what do you think? And in the stars above. Hi, Ted. Glad you could join us. We thank you for giving us a nice summer. Bring me a higher love. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I know blow drying fries my hair, but I'm never gonna stop. Because now I've got Pantene shampoo and conditioner. Pantene's got the Pro V formula to make my hair so strong. The damage of 100 blow dries is gone. Strong is beautiful. Pantene. Hey there, can I help you with anything? Hey, Siri, what's AT&T's latest offer? Oh, I don't think that Siri right can. now, switch to AT&T for an iPhone and get one free. Wow, is that right? Yeah, it's basically... Yes, that is the current offer from AT&T. Okay, Siri, you don't know everything. Well, I know you asked me to call you the AT&T hostess with the most... Okay, shut her down. Turn it off. Right now, buy an iPhone and get another one free when you add a second line. What's the hot story in volume? It's CoverGirl's new Max Volume Flamed Out Mascara. Max Volume Wire Brush sweeps lashes up and out for bigger, longer lashes with three times the volume. Hot enough for you? New Max Volume Flamed Out Mascara from easy, breezy, beautiful CoverGirl. Try with Flamed Out Shadow Pots and Pencils.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2016 Pacific Rim Gymnastics Championships presented by Hershey's. My name is Evan Heider, alongside 2008 Olympic silver medalist Samantha Peshik. We are live here in the Xfinity Arena in Everett, Washington, about 30 minutes north of the Emerald City of Seattle. And the road to Rio, the lanes are closing in as we approach this, this summer's Olympic Games. Sam, we're going to see some familiar faces tonight. Who are we looking at for Team USA and what's the journey for the rest of the year? Well, like you mentioned, we talked about this road to Rio since last year's championships, but Pacific Rim is just the beginning of a jam-packed summer for these athletes. The USA girls in particular have the Secret US Classic, PNG Championships, and Olympic Trials all in a few short months. Dang. So the main priority at this meet is to stay healthy and consistent. This whirlwind of competitions really tests the girls' mental training. And the question when it comes time to pick the Olympic team is who can handle competing time and time again, achieving the expectation of being nearly perfect. And this is a six-member senior women's team. Some of the other countries, they do have the option to add junior athletes. So we're going to see a mix of those from some of the other countries. But Team USA going with a mix of familiar faces and uh, some newcomers to the senior scene as well. We're going to start off tonight's competition with somebody who we talked to uh, yesterday and or two days ago on podium training. Brenna Dowell of the United States will start us on floor. And in in that interview we had with her, she uh, she was very excited, excited and, and adamant about wanting to prove herself again. Yeah, it's a great opportunity for the girls to show what they can do and to prove one more time why they should make the Olympic team. And, and it's a six-man team like we mentioned tonight, but remember, the Olympic team is only five girls. Music is on. Dahl starts in a big way. This will be a huge test. I think she saved it. Did you see a toe out? A little precarious, not seeing a flag go up, but we are way away from the floor. Gonna come right back with another double front. She gets that landing. Floor sometimes is one of the more tricky events to start on because you're a little bit cold from March in. So they really got to get it going, get the competition started right here in a big way. Landings have been consistent so far. The first one a little bit chest over, close to going out of bounds, but on some of her lead elements as well, not necessarily hitting that complete 180 split. It'll be interesting to see what the judges do. Likely deduct. <laughs> Final pass here for Dowell. Nice way to finish after the little stumble on her first pass. We are going to see her on all four events tonight, but her specialty really is the bars. And, and although that she would like to compete on all four events, I'm sure the event that she shines and can help Team USA on is bars. And that's where we're gonna be focused on her later tonight. Speaking of uneven bars, that's where Japan will start their night. This is Kiko Kuajima, one of the junior athletes on their team. We saw some of the junior athletes last night in the men's competition, and they were just having fun with it. So it'll be interesting to see what the approach is for these uh, young Japanese gymnasts as well. And folks, don't be surprised when we throw you a few curveballs to the trampoline event, which is also going on uh, simultaneously here. Pushing strong through her handstands. I'd like to see a little bit quicker, more precise handstand position. A little bit close, but she got the bar. You can tell on her technique, she's uh, using her size to her advantage. She's not putting a ton of power and momentum into her giants because she really doesn't have to bend her body between the bars. Setting up here, dismounts. Full twisting double back for Kiko Kuajima. I think one of their 
main goals coming out here tonight is to, to hit all their events. And I know all girls want to, but they're coming from Japan and they're having a lot of adjustments in terms of time change and food. So it's great to see them hit a great set. Dun -dun -dun -dun. It's Reagan Smith on floor exercise, one of those new faces. Big test, double lay. A little shy on the landing. Couldn't quite get the height she needed. She was having trouble the other day on practice, trying to fix the technique a little bit. Strong triple pull. Trains at Texas Dreams Gymnastics, and their athletes are really good at the one and a half through the triple. Through the four here. to her feet. This is going to be a great test for her as a new senior to see if she can hang with, you know, the Simone Biles of the world and how she fits in with the team chemistry. Pretty tall order there. She said this part down here on the floor is her favorite part of the routine. Nice way to finish. Boom. Getting her neck workout in for the day is Reagan Smith, second up for Team USA. Sam, that like, first pass. It seems like it's going around, I hope. <laughs> Next up can nail a full four pass routine. I don't know what's going on with these first passes. Joining the dismount of Audrey Rousseau, Canada on beam. Next up on floor, we have Lori Hernandez. But first, we are going to watch a little bit of trampoline. Zenia Nomenko of Russia. Interesting choices by the Russian Federation. Didn't send any artistic athletes to this event. Totally up to them, but they've actually named their Olympic team already. So, you know. It's a little bit different strategy than, than we have here in the United States. Like we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, they have a long summer to go to make this Olympic team. Xenia starts things out. You want to see these athletes stay right over that X in the center of the trampoline. She's underway here. Actually, there's a machine attached to the bed of the trampoline that tells the judges the time of flight. Factored into the score. She has very sharp arm position, strong core. Traveling a little bit there. Finishes with that double layout. Got to show control at the end of that routine. Scores for the first two athletes, 14-5-5 for Brenna Dowell and 14-3 for Reagan Smith. Both execution scores in the eights. Not uncommon, but USA really want to be striving for those high eights, low nines if possible. Looking quickly at Lori Hernandez, but we're going over to the vault. Their final competitor is Courtney McGregor. This is New Zealand. Always a favorite for NBC to focus on. They travel far. If, if, in case you were wondering, New Zealand is far from everything. Is it? Is New Zealand really far? I don't know. So you, you, you graduated UCLA uh, pretty recently. Uh, not sure if you were a geography major. I was not. I do know where New Zealand is, though. And we, we talked a lot <laughs> with the Japanese girls on the adjusting to the time change, adjusting to the equipment, adjusting to the food. There's just so many things that this meet is great for. Speaking of adjustments, Lori Hernandez adjusting to time in the spotlight as a senior athlete. Third up, big mount here, double leg. She gets that first pass. That's what we've been looking for. And this is your pick for second place in the all round, is it not? We're picking, we're picking for second. I think Simone's got this one unlocked, but I, based on podium training, what we're seeing in uh, landings like that, I'm going with Glory. always so fun to watch, but I'm most impressed with her confidence. Also as a new senior, she's jumped into this 
senior spotlight, as we say, and it's handled it flawlessly. That part of her floor routine has been in since I first saw her as a junior competitor at the U.S. Classic in 2012, finishing up here. Beaming through after the double tuck. Strong start for Lori Hernandez. Sam, what did you think about that? Total package. Total package. I think it was great. She wasn't perfect on her floor passes, but I think she did a perfect job of recovering from those little mistakes. You could barely tell. She held those landings together. We always talk about how tight of an athlete she is, and I think that's really going to be in her favor this summer. McGregor here had trouble on the double twisting your chenko and warm up. Safely to her feet. A little shy of the rotation you saw her upper body or shoulders weren't quite square there. Looking over now at Shallon Olsen. Judges trying to ice her out a little bit. Yep, it's actually Kirsten Peterman waiting for the score for Shallon Olsen, excuse me. And the worst is starting on beam and being iced out of beam. But you know what? Like we talk about, this meet is great practice for the rest of summer. And she's going to have to handle that sort of pressure later on in her career, hopefully. Getting a look back, one of the athletes doing two vaults tonight is Courtney McGregor. We saw her double twisting her chinko first. Just like at the World Championships and Olympic Games, if you want to make vault finals, got to do two vaults from different families. Yurchenko half on, half off, piked back salto. Broke the body position a little bit in the air. We saw leg separation before she landed. Underway here with Peterman now. Oh. Really broke her hips on the front aerial. Couldn't quite get her chest up. Saw her kind of la lag back a little bit. Got to keep the core tight and bring everything right up as soon as you get a foot on the beam. Better technique there on the side summy. Score in for Lori Hernandez, 14.950. Talked about those high eights, low nines for the execution. This one was an 8.85. the cheer go up right as Peterman is mid-series and we're going to join defending Olympic champion Allie Raisman fourth up on floor for Team USA tonight. And she's ready. I, I love her game face. She has come into this meet really ready and really being a leader for this Team USA. I love her game last year. Huge first pass. What she's known for. First pass, it's a lot to fit in, but Allie, through the years, has gotten really good at just zeroing in and almost gainering while staying in, in form on that front layout and beautiful Arabian double pike to stag. Very seasoned competitor. She has competed at huge meets. The pressure should be no big deal for her, but I think it's a great opportunity to freshen up and to work with the other girls and kind of mentor the younger ones like Lori and Reagan. Just getting some criticism on that double layout.
Great set for Allie Raisman. Um. Exuding out there. She made that look easy. <laughs> Lori and bring her on. They're, they're That's the thing about competitions like these. It's a it's a team competition. A lot of people think gymnastics is an individual. Events like the Olympic Games and like the Pacific Rim Championships, they are a team event, and that's what Ali's coach Mihai Breshin really hit on yesterday when we were talking to him. Megan Roberts will anchor the Canadian team on beam, and I think Ali's rhinestones were even confident on that floor routine. <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm just waiting for an all rhinestone leotard. We're, I wish we're I had flirting with it. I wish I had rhinestones on my shirt to match. We'll get you some. Nice leg form throughout that. Having a little bit trouble absorbing the beam when they land. A little bouncy. Beam isn't particularly anyone's favorite event to start on, but you got to do it. Everyone's got to do beam at some point. A little Q&A session for you, Sam. How does being on the podium affect you on beam? It, it's different. The beam is bouncier. The beam is, you have to absorb it 10 times more than you would on a regular surface. And a lot of people wouldn't necessarily know that but you can tell that these Canadian girls are not super comfortable just yet. Working well through some of the acro elements. Interesting kind of abrupt full turn there. Trying to get as much bonus as possible to compete with these difficult USA girls. Sam, we're gonna see that switch half all night long and I would say there's probably about two or three girls in here who are uh, really going to hit that 180 on that skill. Again, trying to get that difficulty, but times like these, it's maybe not necessarily worth it. More deductions than it would gain you in benefits. Megan Roberts with that double tuck dismount. I would say that's probably the highlight for her. And Simone Biles, three-time defending world champion. And we've got a lot of crowd noise in our ears here. It's electric here in Everett. She's feeling it. You can hear the girls cheering for her. Warranted. This is a Brazilian themed. Imagine that. Full twisting double layout to open. I just want to sit back and watch her dance. She performs this. Me too. It's a great new routine from her. Perfect for this upcoming summer. The way she absorbed that landing was textbook. And she's set up really well here by a 15-6 for Allie Raceman in the bank. Oh. <laughs> you can tell that's her favorite part of her routine. Glad she <laughs> kept that one in from last year's routine. A wing. Wow. I mean, jaws are dropping left and right. Nobody's really surprised, but every now and then she just puts together a routine that's like, I'm, I'm gonna stick everything, guys. First pass had a little bit of that signature Simone bounce. Like to see her absorb it a little bit, but it's technically impeccable. Tried to get that one as well. Tiny bit of shifting in her feet. Oh! Wow. The thing about Simone, even though she didn't stick her first pass and had a little step on her last pass, it doesn't matter. Her difficulty level is so high that she could probably fall and still win. We'll be back with the score for Simone Biles in location number two. Follow along on Twitter using hashtag PackRim2016. We'll be back.
Dad? For sure. So, um, yeah, if you look at the assets, that was... Uh-huh. Are you looking at the right one as me? Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry about that. There must be higher love Down in the heart What do you think? And in the stars above Hi, Ted. Glad you could join us. I know blow drying fries my hair, but I'm never gonna stop because now I've got Pantene. Pantene shampoos and conditioners have the Pro V formula that locks moisture inside my hair and makes it stronger. The damage from 100 blow dries is gone. I love it. Now my hair is so strong, I can always take the heat. Strong is beautiful. Pantene. in Everett, Washington. All right, Everett. Just scouring the crowd here, checking out what we got here. What's your name? Brooklyn. Brooklyn, are you a gymnast? Yes. Yes, what's your favorite event? You can stand up. You wanna stand up? What's your favorite event? Beam. What level are you? I'm a level four. Very cool, now why do you like beam the most? Cause that's like the scariest event, cause you gotta balance and you know, all that stuff. Uh, I don't know, I just like how I feel like it's the funnest to learn new tricks on. Very good answer. Now, do you by any chance know how to sing? Yes. You do. So if I play a song, maybe you might be able to sing along with it. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna play a song, and then we're gonna just dip the lyrics out and see if you can finish the song, okay? Okay. You got this? Yeah. Okay, because you're a gymnast, so you can handle this stuff, right? Handle things under pressure? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. DJ Patrick, kick me a song. Oh, I like this one. Can you hear my voice this time? This is Take back my life song. Prove I'm all right. Awesome. All right, check this out. I got, I got some shirt, T-shirts for you from, from the event, some USA Gymnastics merchandise. This is really cool. It's an Under Armour headband, right? right? And then this is the, pretty much the coolest thing. It's a one-pound Hershey's chocolate bar. One pound of Hershey's chocolate. You know what you can do with that? You can make a lot of s'mores, okay? Everett, give it up for Brooklyn! <laughs> And overhead, you now have your top eight among senior women in the all-around competition for tonight's competition, Subdivision 2 of the Pacific Rim Championships, presented by Hershey's.
And later on tonight, we will have our award ceremony for individual senior men and women on trampoline. Ladies and gentlemen, back live at the 2016 Pacific Rim Gymnastics Championships. Got some news. Got some news. Ready to share it. 16050, 6'9 start value, 915 execution score for Simone Biles. <gasps> Home run. Home run, grand Crazy. slam, all of the above. Reagan Smith here starting off rotation number two. Should be a double full. Great. Best one that she's done all weekend. She got a little bit more block, a little bit tighter on the twisting position. Split her legs a little bit before the landing, but best one she's done all week. Looking at Charlotte Sullivan now from New Zealand. One thing I will say about Reagan, twists a little bit quickly off the table and lands a little bit staggered in her feet. But that was w one of the best ones we've seen from her all week again, and that's the time to do it in competition. Definitely. You Sullivan. can tell she's a gamer. Sullivan starting off nice to Kachev, bail the low. Having a little bit of trouble using the bar for her swing. It looks like she's muscling it a little bit, making it harder to finish, get the momentum for her dismount. Crank some nice ones as she goes into that double pike. Big happy, hop to, there. happy to get that one under her belt is Charlotte Sullivan from New Zealand. Looking now at Lori Hernandez, third highest American score, 14.95 again in the first rotation. This is going to be another one of those double fulls. So remember, you have an opportunity for direct comparison two new senior athletes doing double fulls here who will rise. Hopped on the landing, but I really like her block. She waited before she twist, and uh, again, like we mentioned, Lori is an extremely tight athlete. Everything she does is very precise and in good form. We talk about waiting for the block. Squeezes on the board, great block. Legs were together. She spots the table, but couldn't quite get her chest up quick enough and had to take a hop back. And one thing I will say, you mentioned her chest as we joined the floor routine of Audrey Russo, Canada. When she She's very good at bringing her chest up is Lori Hernandez. Really good at bringing her chest up quickly, but sometimes that brings her body up and she's still rotating a little bit. So that results in kind of some of those bounding hops back Russo. Disappointing double pike to finish there. Just looks a little gassed as we are going to go to the second vaulter in this rotation. Brenda Dahl, another one of those double fulls. We're going to see three double fulls and then two Aminars and a little wild card Chang in there as well. When we were watching vault practice, two, was that two days ago? I thought that all of their vaults looked a lot better than last year. They had a lot more block, a lot more height. Um, so I think a lot of them have been spending a lot of time in the gym, working on drills, working on getting momentum, especially on this event. Patience is key as we look at our cross-town rivals from NBC Sports over there. Tim Daggett, Nasi Luke, and Al Troutwig. Hey, guys. <laughs> Illy. Joining Courtney McGregor, we're going to hold Dowell there for the NBC broadcast we just mentioned. Transitions with a bail to low bar to handstand. Little loose leg form. Had to really muscle up that kip to get it going. Some knees through the front giants. Let's the ginger rise nicely, but again, just that rotation that she needs to kind of snap into these skills, make them tight and crisp, lacking a bit. McGregor there finishes up tuck full in for New Zealand. Going to look at the replay now of Brenna Dowell on vault. Third up, another double full. We get the slow-mo version first. See, because she was a little bit turned right there, but squares it up. 
I liked her block. I thought she turned a little bit early on the table. But again, I liked how high her chest landed and small hop back. Pretty good vault for Brenna. Very nice as we look at Madison Kopiak of Canada. Second up, she'll attend the University of Washington. So kind of cool for her to be in the Seattle area competing internationally. Allie Raisman getting ready to go on vault. Just chalking up, don't worry. Score so far, we talked about that high eight, low nine execution score. Smith, eight eight, Hernandez nine, Dowell, nine one five. Bring you the full scores after Raisman. Oh, huge. I, I was talking about how these girls had so much more block than I noticed last year. Allie in particular is one of those athletes I was talking about, but it's almost like she has to relearn the landing because she has so much block, so much power, needing to reel it in, control the landing a little bit, spot it, and obviously not have those hops on the landing. But I, I think just got her shoulders a little bit further over. We talked about her improvement on the block and you know, maybe in the heat of the moment, just trying to go a little bit harder. Yeah, well, it's a long summer, and, and everyone wants to see her do that rather than landing short or anything else. Would you call it a cruel summer, Sam? A cruel, cruel <laughs> summer? It's a cool, long summer. Kopiak underway now. I like the technique there. It really lets the pull in rise. Doesn't travel far back. Simone Biles underway now. <laughs> you can't even see her in the screen because her block was that big. Coming back down from uh, some interstellar space. Kind of an uncharacteristic hop there. We've seen this a couple times in the past major competitions from Simone. Not settling in as much as she can, but I almost guarantee if she'll, she's gonna do this vault in finals tomorrow and you can expect her to settle in a little bit more as we go back over to Kopiak. But remember, Simone is gonna show two vaults. This is her de competition debut of a vault called the Chang. Nice double pike from Kopiak to finish up. Sam, talk about the difficulty. Now, you didn't necessarily train two vaults as an elite, and it's kind of an undertaking. Right, well, that, that's what I was gonna say. Sometimes, you know, learning a completely different vault, a different landing, it, it's a learning how to feel and spotting, learning where to spot, it kind of might mess up your first vault. It's Simone, so obviously it did not mess anything up for her other than the little jolt in the first vault but uh, I'm willing to bet that's a one-time thing. It's not gonna happen again. As we take a slow-mo look here, I thought she rushed the block just a little. It was high there. See, the chest is lower than probably some of you have noticed in the training videos, but super clean. Just breaks at the hip a tiny bit, but when you're looking at Simone Biles, it's very hard, you know, it's, it's she, another leap. She, yeah, she has so much momentum and so much power. She doesn't necessarily need the full block like other girls might <laughs> on the same vault. Joining Nagi Kajida, third up for Japan. She's one of the senior athletes. Remember, the international field has chosen to mix junior and senior athletes. So they actually have four. Slight knee bend on that series. Four juniors in this rotation. She's the lone senior talked about the uh, scores for Team USA, 9-5 for Simone Biles. And uh, so across the board, we're looking at 14-6 Reagan Smith, 14-8 Fernandez, 14-9-5 Dowell, 15-2 Raisman, 15-8-7-5 for Biles. Wow. And that's what you want to do it, Sam. That moment, that is clear momentum. There's one blip on the E score um, from a Dowell that went 9-1-5 down to Ali Raisman. 8-9, but that start value comes into play. Kajita, a little bit of hesitation there and right at the end of the beam, but she, really, really cranks a triple full there. Her beam style was a little bit timid, and you could see that by her balance checks after a few of her elements. But again, this is a big arena. There's a big crowd here. If you're not used to that, it, it does take some mental preparation as well.
joining Shallon Olsen. Third up for Canada in this rotation. She's one of those names you've seen around the international stage for a while, was doing some big things as a junior athlete, has moved into the senior ranks now. Big things like a tuck double-double to open. Strongest events obviously being floor and vault. Bringing the difficulty to this Canadian team. And when, when you're going up against Team USA and specifically Simone Biles, it really is hard to compete on execution when you can't get the difficulty to even come close to matching. Memo turn there. Connects it to a tidy full turn at the end. Fully rotated triple fold. Tiny bit of legs crossing in the air, but zeroes and on the landing well. Stuck to whole pike, chest low, a little bit too low, but was able to get a clean landing. I'm gonna call you on that, Sam. I saw a little hop. Did you? I did. Oh, I did not. A little bit, a little bit of something. <coughs> Taking a look at the final dismount for New Zealand, that was Estella Mathewson. Going back over to trampoline. It's always fun to mix it up a little bit. Samantha Smith of Canada. Thought you were gonna say Samantha Peshek. I was gonna say I'm not so doing I'm a say, trampoline get routine out right there. now. <laughs> Canada, a long tradition of great trampoline athletes. United States actually gunning for some of those spots at the upcoming Rio test event. Charlotte Drury, world finalist there. Their air semi-finalist, excuse me. Their air awareness in their flips are incredible. You can see that their spot position is way before they hit the tramp. She's traveling a bit. Remember we said it was important to stay right in the center. Closes with a layout double-double and absorbs the landing, shows control. Looks happy with it. <laughs> Big hug from coach there. It's always a good sign when you get a warm welcome after Walk off the apparatus. Megan Roberts here for Canada up next. One of the notable Canadian team members is Brittany Rogers, who's actually competing for the University of Georgia here in America. We'll see her in the next rotation on vault. Big Arabian nice. double pike. Full in. There's a stick for you, Evan. You see that beautiful pike full in? That switch leap has that trailing leg just back there, not hitting the 180, but getting into it. Nice to see her She's projecting, it. projecting up and out. Open in the double pike, had the chest nice and up. I think it surprised her just a little bit. Had to take a couple little bouncy steps back. Trying to get as much bonus as she can from those leaps right before her last pass. Chest very low on that landing, but gets the stick and Seems to be extremely happy with that routine. Very nice for Megan Roberts. I think Canada is on to the right idea, projecting up and out a little bit. I think they need a little more time to refine and polish, but good to see there. This is Stella Ashcroft, the final competitor. She's a junior from New Zealand. Ooh. Oh. When that bailed a handstand, your, her shoulders were too far over her wrists. Can't swing out of that. 
didn't chalk up or get off the bar actually is still holding onto the bar. It might benefit her actually to just come off and regroup. Junior she athletes on an international stage, it's kind of impossible to tell how they'll react and respond. She's doing well to work through here, but you can tell she's a little flustered. Keeps the double tuck dismount to her feet. You can tell it's kind of that stutter step. <laughs> I think she was laughing off. It's, it's like an oopsie. <laughs> so it comes with polish. It comes with more experience to handle, again, the, the pressure of a big arena and a very tough international competition. Speaking of international competition, that world semifinalist I mentioned, Charlotte Drury, is traveling to the end of the trampoline, has to add in that free back tuck not planned. And again, oh. Traveling there will be disappointed in her performance. And with trampoline, it's almost that chain reaction of events. When you're traveling too far to the end, you have to try and compensate. You're doing things differently than an ideal world. Exactly. On beam and floor in artistic gymnastics, you have poses and time to regroup. And trampoline, you, you don't really get that time, you, that luxury of figuring out. You have to make very quick decisions, and unfortunately, it couldn't couldn't fix that one quick enough. Kirsten Peterman mounts with a two and a half front tuck to close out Canada's floor rotation here. High score on their side so far is a 14 from the previous athlete. We just saw Megan Roberts. We're getting a little execution. dancey here, Evan. I see you moving your shoulders over there. <laughs> Can't fight the rhythm. shy on that leap combination. Couldn't quite get full split. We live in a full split world, Sam. If you can't get there. All I want. <laughs> I wasn't the most flexible gymnast, so I, I sympathize. <laughs> Really appreciate you guys following along using hashtag Packrim2016 on Twitter. Folds nicely into that double pike. Enjoyed the leg form on that. Everything was tightened together as Meg Kristen Peterman finishes out that rotation for Canada. And that closes out rotation number two. We're halfway through in Everett. Follow along on Twitter. I'm at YoEv and Sam Samantha Peshek. What, what is it? Is it at Samantha Peshek? <laughs> at Samantha Peshek. All right, don't miss it. We'll be back soon. blow drying fries my hair, but I'm never gonna stop. Because now I've got Pantene shampoo and conditioner. Pantene's got the Pro V formula to make my hair so strong. The damage of 100 blow dries is gone. Strong is beautiful. Pantene. Hey there, can I help you with anything? Hey Siri, what's AT&T's latest offer? Oh, I don't think that Siri right can. now, switch to AT&T for an iPhone and get one free. Wow, is that right? Yeah, it's basically. Yes, that is the current offer from AT&T. Okay, Siri, you don't know everything. Well, I know you asked me to call you the AT&T hostess with the most... Okay, shut her down. Turn it off. Right now, buy an iPhone and get... What's the hot story in volume? It's CoverGirl's new Max Lashes Up and Out for bigger, longer lashes with... ...volume. New noise for Emma. Oh. 
Are you a gymnast? Yes. What's your favorite event to do in gymnastics? Bars. Wow. And who's your favorite gymnast? Simone and Gabby Douglas. Yeah, they're really cool. Now, you have something very special about yourself. You were on the Ellen Show, weren't you? Yes. Yeah, and you guys might have seen her. She was on the Ellen Show doing her gymnastic skills, and you showed everything off. What was the skills you did for Ellen? I don't know. You don't remember. So hard being a celebrity, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So when we walked up here, you said, I've never been up here before. Isn't this cool? Yes. Do you hope to be someday competing maybe in the Olympics? Yes. Can you show us maybe one of your skills? Yeah? Yes. Okay, I love your just positivity. Okay, you can go right here. Look, X marks the spot, that's your spot. And just do, do your move, face that way. Yeah, right there. Yeah, there we go. Yep, go ahead, yeah. You got it, Emma. Yes! That is awesome. Can you wave? Yeah! Very cool. Okay, can you do a press handstand? Yay, Emma! High five! Now, I was, I was hanging out with you, and I saw something even more amazing. You can whistle. Can you whistle for me? Do it one more time. You, you got too close to the mic. Try it. Try it again. Yes! So good. Now, and who's, who's this behind me? Emma, who's this behind me? Miss Kiss. That is Miss Kiss. You want to give Miss Kiss a hug? Yeah. Now, Emma, we have to say a big thank you to Hershey because Hershey saw you on the Ellen Show, and Hershey said, we need to get Emma out here at the Pacific Rim Championships. And we're so glad you came here. Thank you so much. Did you have fun? Yes. And are you ready to watch some more of the competition? Yes. Okay. Look right up there at camera and say, thank you, Everett. Thank you, Everett. And wave. among junior women in the all-around of the 2016 Pacific Rim Championships presented by Hershey's for tonight's Subdivision 2. And on the overhead video board, here come your top eight among senior women in the all-around of the 2016 Pacific Rim Championships presented by Hershey's Subdivision 2. <laughs> Back live here at the Xfinity Arena, getting a look at the salute of Allie Raceman. Standings after two rotations. United States on top, 121.9. Canada following 108 even. New Zealand, 74.3. Little leg separation, but good swing going. Muscling up that kip a little bit, gets it going. Allie is extremely strong. So this event, whether she uses the swing of the bar or not, She usually makes it through. Got a little bit of feet. But again, this is her weakest event, although it's, it's not a weak event. It is her weakest. And for her, she just needs to go up and hit a set just like she did there, and it's going to help her all-around score. Kristen Peterman will be the second vaulter for Canada. And like you said, Sam, Allie Raceman is not out there to 
go after a bars medal in any international competition, no. but it's, it strengthens her case as a balanced all-arounder in the eyes of the selection committee, and going out there and hitting a bars routine is only going to help her case. You know, before 2012, a lot of people only looked at her as an event specialist, and it was a big deal for her to go out and prove she was an all-arounder, and that's exactly what she did. And to come back even stronger than what she was in 2012 is remarkable to me. Peterman with the Yurchenko, one and a half. A little bit of knee bend throughout the air, but nice clean spot before she landed. Taking a look at the dismount of Stella Ashcroft, or excuse me, of Stella Mathewson. Just a full. Soyoko Hanawana. Just trying to get you a little taste of all of the competition right now. I think I added an extra syllable in there, Hanawa. I told you to practice that, Evan. Come on now. Can't get it right. <laughs> <laughs> Lori Hernandez up next on bars. Ellie Raceman with an 8-3 in execution, 14-3 overall. What do you think her coach Maggie was telling her before she saluted? Do it how you do it. I mean, podium training was absolutely immaculate. One of the best things I think that sets Lori apart is on her straddle element, she actually over extends. You see her hips almost reach, her, her feet are behind her torso. It's beautiful, caught a little bit close, but the thing that makes her stand out like you mentioned, other than her straddle position, is her incredibly tight form. We talked about it on the floor vault, but again, <laughs> her form is what sets her apart and has gives her that unique look. Paxalto there was a little far, but she showed a lot of patience. I think maturity carried it through. Not necessarily an impeccable routine, but really allowed her swing to carry her through. Caught a little close on that one release, but Happy with it, Coach Maggie Haney there giving her some pointers and reviewing after. Tuck full in here. Now watch just how tight she is on this landing. Brings everything up. Make sure that those sh shoulders are right on top. Kiko Kuwajima. Who? You heard me. <laughs> just making sure that was the right girl. Oh, you can start saying the Japanese girl's <laughs> names if you want, Sam. No, no, that was your job no, no. to practice them. <laughs> Full in right off the bat, a few steps backwards. You can just tell compared to the USA girls, these Japanese girls are not as seasoned, not as polished, but that is something that they're working towards. Going for a quad turn, came up just a little before that. Double tuck, you saw the uh, chest a little low. Is that what you're going to say, Sam? That's exactly what I was going to say. You took the words out of my mouth. Chest up a little bit higher on that double back, but couldn't quite find the landing. Again, this floor is a little bit bouncier because it is on podium. You don't say. Yes. So sometimes it takes not seasoned competitors a little bit more time to adjust. Taking a look back at the vault of Shallon Olsen. Nice double full. I saw some leg issues on the table. Closer Throughout. hip, a little bit on the landing. I'd agree with that as we move over to Simone Biles, who will follow the 14-8 of Lori Hernandez. Execution 8-7. Green flag is up for Biles. Simone is an all-around gymnast, but I'd say this one is the weakest of her four, even though, again, I do not think that she has a weak event. 
she is just so outstanding on the other three that this event, she just needs to hit it. Weiler half to Maloney, opens up. Straddle to Kachev, pike to Kachev there, right down to Paxalto. Beautiful flight, uses the bar effortlessly. Coach Amy Borman looking there, and that's a little blip on the radar screen of execution, but Simone Biles is just too dang good. She is actually superhuman. I'm convinced. <laughs> that's a muscle through just a tiny bit, but right after that came back with a toe on and the tucked full out for Biles. And one thing I like, and, and it makes her stand out even amongst her US teammates and the rest of the country is the knee and the ankle and the foot form down to the entire, you know, last baby toe is together. Taking a look at the replay of Shallon Olsen's second vault. That was the first vault. But she did do a second. Brittany Rogers up next for Canada. Talked about her competing for the University of Georgia, and she's a vault finalist from the 2012 Olympic Games. We saw her warming up two vaults here, so we can expect another Canadian vaulter with two. It's been a long season competing since January for the University of Georgia, like you mentioned. And last weekend was NCAA Regional Championships, and the following weekend is NCAA National Championships. So she really isn't resting at all. And actually unveiling a vault that she has not competed in the NCAA season. I saw her do a double twisting Yurchenko, and then the, the other vault will be a Yurchenko half on of some variety. We saw her playing around with a couple, so it might be a little bit of a curveball for what we see here. Here's the second vault of Olsen. That half on. One and a half off, called a Forkina. Tons of form throughout that though, Sam. Uh, the technique, not necessarily the strongest. I think she, uh, you know, it's it's actually a tuck version of the vault that we saw Simone do. And it's, you know, it's all in the block. And tucked, that was a little rushed. Yeah, tucked a little bit too early. We saw leg separation to generate that twist. Looking at Natsumi Hamashima. Even for the double pike. Even from the run, it didn't look like she had enough power. Seemed a little bit gassed at the end of her floor team. Simone Biles, 15 895 execution back here for Brittany Rogers, Yurchenko double full. Drills it, I mean, it's nice. Not terrible amounts of distance from the table, but again, we talked about her NCAA rigorous schedule and she wasn't competing that vault. Right, and, and good block. Looking now at Brenna Dowell. This is the event that is her best event and, and could be a front runner for her. However, she's had some trouble this past year and when we were speaking with her yesterday, she definitely said this is the event where she wanted to show she deserved to be here. Yeah, looking for a bit of redemption and has actually changed the bar routine around quite significantly. No longer doing the Takacha of the mix grip down to the Ejova transition. When we watched practice a few days ago, she looked strong. She looked confident and, and really focused on this competition. Rogers focusing in on that Yurchenko half on. Not sure if they'll give her the layout there. Hips were a bit closed, but had some nice extension. Looks really happy with it. <laughs> can get a look there at former Australian Olympian Alana Slater in the international judging panel for this event. And Sam, this is a big test. It is. You could see she was shaking it out, maybe a little bit nervous going into this event. Shapash right into the Takachev. A little bit close, great catch there. Hansen coming right back on top. You can always tell with the rhythm right here on that skill and she handles it. Toe on Shapash half. The flow of this routine has been really nice. Great routine from Brenna Dow. Exactly what she wanted to go out here and do. Hit a nice solid set. She was a little bit close on a release, but other than that, I think that was one of the best that she can do. Nagi Kajita. 
here of Japan. And that was a great routine for Brenda Dahl. I think it speaks volumes of what she has committed herself to in terms of mental toughness going out there and really you know, putting that pressure on herself, but embracing it. Well, we also asked her, did you prepare any differently? And she said, not really. You know, going into World Championships last year, she said she was treating it more as, you know, coming back, her, her uh, c coming out basically to the back to competition. And this year, she's just focused on the training, focused on her bar routine, and, and that's been the difference. And talking about coming back, we have a few U.S. athletes who aren't here, but are definitely still in the contention for Olympic spots. We have former World Championship team members, Madison Koshin, Alyssa Bauman, Michaela Skinner, and also Maggie Nichols, recently out with a knee injury. But I wouldn't count Maggie Nichols out. I think that she is going to be back. She's gonna be fierce, and, and maybe this slight little break would be good for her body and she can be fresh for the rest of the summer. Nagi Kajita, one of the senior athletes, the lone senior athlete in the Japanese delegation here. Really nice triple full in the middle of that routine as we move over to the uneven bars. Last competitor here is fourth place finisher at the 2014 World Championships on uneven bars. It's Ashton Locklear. We'll see her on two events tonight. And this, again, you get two events, so 50% less chance to be seen and, and verified in the eyes of the national team, but this is one where she shines. Beautiful extension and lines throughout this routine. It's like she's just playing around on monkey bars. It looks very easy for her. Although it is stacked with difficulty. Watch this rise. Nice. Floats it, fully extended arms on the catch. Full twisting double back, full out. That wow. means the second flip. Tiny adjustment there, but really cool, calm performance for Locklear. Looks happy with it. I thought the angles on that were all great. Looking over now, moving to trampoline. See Dylan Schmidt of New Zealand. Check out his arm position. Comes straight down before he lands it. To spot the tramp. They have double, double the finish. Got to control it at the end. It's making me dizzy watch it. <laughs> I don't know, they keep him straight. Very nice for Schmidt there. Score in for Brenda Dahl, 15-2-5. Two tenths lower in execution than Biles with an 8-7-5. Looking now at Courtney McGregor. Already from that mount, there was a little bit of a wobble and you can see her arm place and placements were not that sharp. She pulls it back on for this combination. Solid connection there. Second guessing her landing positions a little bit on the landing of that. It looked extremely straight. See, leaving her shoulders down, almost closing off her body, not creating that full aggressive stance. Tentative, but when you can stay on the beam if it works for you, it's probably what she's focused on. Nice leg up turn there. I think there's two different styles of beam. You know, really attacking the beam, fierce, very sharp, Lori Hernandez style. And then there's, I wouldn't say a more timid style, but definitely slower paced, really appreciating the artistic value of the routine. And, and I think that's what she's going for here. Round up double tuck. Nice routine from McGregor, stayed on. Ashton Locklear, 15-5-5, crosses the 9-0 threshold with the 9-0-5-0 over there. Great execution, and, and you could see that that her execution score was going to be extremely high. Reagan Smith next up on bars. Last up for the USA girls. Took a fall in one of her big release moves in warm-up just prior to the 
competition in the third rotation starting. So, Although her coaches and Marta probably do not appreciate that as an athlete. Sometimes it's better to make your mistakes in warm-up, get them out of your system so you can focus on hitting your routine for the meet. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times in gymnastics, sometimes you almost, especially in practice, you almost have to have a bad turn to be like, definitely not that. That is <laughs> yeah. not what I want to do. Okay, make that mental change and translate that when it counts. Yeah. It's a weird concept. It doesn't really make sense, but you're right. That's exactly the sort of mindset that uh, goes on sometimes. Green flag is up for Smith. Big jump to the high bar. Mother was a gymnast at Auburn University, so it's literally in her genes. Nice Jaeger to start there. Rikna caught a little close, but that was the one she had trouble with in the touch warm up. Nice push on the bar. Great pirouette work. Look for some counter rotation there. Better than we saw in podium training. Her handstands have been great. Rise on the dismount. Reagan Smith, that's a great one because a little bit of doubt in her training this week. Has had a long senior season thus far, already competing in Gisolo. But I think that just shows she's a gamer, and, and when the green flag goes up, she knows that she can hit it, and that's exactly what she's trying to prove to Marta Caroli and the rest of the USA delegation. Charlotte Sullivan will close out the beam rotation for New Zealand. Flip-flop, two-foot layout. able to save that a little bit, pressed her heels back. And the New Zealand girls, you, you can tell, they have the talent, they have some skills, they just need to put it all together. A little bit more preparation, a little bit more confidence, the way they carry themselves on the apparatus, and, and they're going to be right up there always embracing the opportunity to compete internationally. These big tests are probably, you know, the highlight of the season for these athletes. Round off, two and a half twist. Nice finish for Charlotte Sullivan of New Zealand. And again, want to give big props to everybody following along on Twitter using Packrim 2016. Loving the feedback, bringing it to you guys. That closes out the third rotation of four here at the Pacific Rim Gymnastics Championships presented by Hershey's. We'll be back for the fourth let's and final this, rotation. Get on your feet, it's the fourth rotation! Come on, let's go! Guys is gone. I love it. Here at the Pacific Rim Championships, are you ready to see some of these dads show you their dance moves, Everett? Yes. Where are you from, sir? What's your name? I'm Doug from Snohomish, Washington. All yeah, right. I'm Bruce from Bothell, Washington. Mike, Seattle. 
I'm Hank from Portland, Oregon. Rick from Camas, Washington. All right. These guys have been handpicked. They're ready to go. We have a lot on the line. We have an unbelievable PG gift bag. This thing's loaded with everything you can ever imagine needing to shave, do your hair, brush your teeth, clip your fingernails, and put on your makeup. Okay? And then you will also get the ultimate Hershey's kit for your night of s'mores with your family. All right? So pretty much everything you need to function in society today. Here we go. DJ Patrick's gonna play some music. Our first contestant's gonna come up right here. Right here, center stage. And as soon as you use that beat, wait for the beat. Let's rock this out. DJ Patrick, kick it. He, he, that's good, DJ Patrick. He just looked over at me and goes, enough, enough. All right, come on up. DJ Patrick, kick it. Looking good, okay, okay. Very good, I like your moves, I like your moves. All right, come on up here. Ooh, we got US soccer here. Okay, ready? DJ Patrick, kick it. Oh, yeah, I like that. I like that. Okay, okay. All right, come on up. Come on up. Here we go. Your daughter's screaming for you. Kick it, DJ Patrick. I like the hat takeoff technique. Very good, very good. Okay, and our final competitor here. DJ Patrick, kick it. Oh, we got the worm, ladies and gentlemen! And the sprinkler! Oh my gosh! And the booty shake. Unbelievable. All right, all right. By way of applause, let me hear you. <laughs> the worm always gets them. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for these dads. You get the s'mores kit and the PG kit, and all of your daughters get a one pound Hershey's chocolate bar. Make some noise, Everett. Back live at the 2016 Pacific Rim Gymnastics Championships presented by Hershey's. I am Evan Heider, joined by Samantha Peshik, and underway in the fourth and final rotation, Ashton Locklear coming off the huge 15.55, that includes a 9.05 execution score. And the one criticism I will mention for Ashton is you saw that impeccable form throughout her entire body position, and then we see that flip-flop layout, and there's waivers throughout the knees. And it's her only skill on beam that I feel she has a form deduction. Her form is just so beautiful that it almost stands out more because the rest of her skills are so beautiful. Extremely long lines. This is the event, you know, we talk about she doesn't do floor or vault. So this is the event that she needs to pick up a little bit more to be considered for this Olympic team. Her bars, she looks very confident, very calm. And this is the event that she needs a little bit more experience and a little bit more practice. Really the big waivers have been limited to just some arm waivers, but at her core and her hips, pretty tight. Major deduction 
in her routine, only being the form deduction in her series so far. Setting up here for the dismount. This meet's flying by, folks, and we're already underway in the fourth rotation. Round off double tuck. Very nice for Ashlyn Locklear. I mean, that's her job. Again, she's the first one up doing two events tonight. Marta just wants to see her, A, knock it out of the park on bars, put up a consistent score on beam. And sometimes it's more difficult to only do two events. You feel like you have to be extra perfect on the few events you do. Looking back at the pike front half from Soyoka Hanawa. Back over to trampoline. Steven Gluckstein, USA. Two thousand twelve Olympian for Team USA. Recently engaged, so congrats to him. Underway here. Triple front pike half out. Nice flare positions before he gets back to the tramp, getting a little bit out of control in the corner of the tramp. Like we mentioned, trying to stay in the center at the X. Buckle just a tiny bit there. You can see trying to recover. Controls it, makes it through, gets all those skills under his belt. He's very quick and was able to make those adjustments, although it was not a perfect set for him. You can see a little disappointed with some of the traveling there, but again, safely through the routine as Reagan Smith. She's been doing a good job keeping up this competition. She got thrown in last minute to this meet, and I think she's handled it very well, especially as a new senior. She said she looks up to Ali Raisman and Simone Biles because they've had the experience and they've been here. So it's great to have mentors that have been around the block, such as Simone and Ali. And speaking of around the block, you know, we're not seeing the 2016 AT&T American Cup champion and 2012 Olympic all-around gold medalist Gabby Douglas here has competed for Team USA, obviously, at the American Cup throughout this year. And, you know, we'll see her. There's plenty more meets to be seen for the Olympic champion. What are your thoughts on Douglas's return? I think it's <laughs> amazing how quickly and how effortlessly she has been able to get all of her skills back and get back into her teen shape, which is difficult. Um, Big test here for Smith, flip flop layout, very nice. American Cup was a good test for her, and I think everyone's been given a few meets to see how they handle this sort of pressure. Nice chest rise on that tuck full. She looks extremely focused on this beam set. Keeping the rhythm moving. Setting up for the dismount here. It'll be a series of flip flops into the double pike. Very solid routine from Reagan Smith. And, and overall, she's had a great day. Great day for Reagan Smith. You know, she talked about kind of the grueling schedule of going from one international event back to the ranch, another international event. She was like, Oh, oh gosh, was how she summed it up, but handles it well when the pressure is on. She looks happy with that one and is able to finish the meet on a high note. Getting a big hug from Marta is always the highlight of the competition. Looking over at Megan Roberts, chalking up. She'll be third up for Canada in this rotation. And speaking of Canada, Brittany Rogers, I mentioned, Hadn't done the Yurchenko double full yet this season, but actually did against a LSU in a meet earlier this season. So had one under her belt, but in terms of Yurchenko full versus double full, if you're gonna do a double full, you kind of want a lot under your belt. So good to see her translate that into competition here. But the difference between college gymnastics and you know elite gymnastics, there are just a lot of competitions. You couldn't possibly keep doing these hard skills every single weekend. That's why in college gymnastics, the difficulty is a little bit lower. So she does have experience competing, which could actually help her preparing for the Olympic games. Is that why we didn't get the standing full every weekend from you, Sam? Uh-huh, that is why. Good to know. <laughs> Pulled it out when it counts.
hopefully she can bring that college preparation to the rest of her Canadian girls, learning how to compete week in and week out. Ashton Locklear, 14.45 on beam, 8.65 in her execution score as Roberts gets ready to go. A little shy on that cast to start off with. Huge Jaeger. That's a great angle to see it at. Allows it to rise above, similar to Ashton's. And there again, oh. took her wow. time, but you saw she caught a little close, and it's kind of that chain reaction. If you're catching close on that release move, it changes how you prepare and swing into that transition and just kind of clotheslines herself. It looked like she could save it, but I think her dowel didn't quite get over the bar and had to make a slip there. Oh. Maybe there's something wrong with her grip. Disappointing for Roberts here. Can't quite get the momentum back. That's the most difficult thing about having a mistake on bars is trying to pick up from the middle of the routine. It's just not the same. It's really hard to pick up the rhythm and, and keep going. How about this, Reagan Smith? 6-2 difficulty, that's a score. 885 execution for a 15.050 overall. Allie Raceman underway. Hiked front off the top. Pulls it back on. Slight balance check there. Really aggressive nice. into that flip-flop layout. I love how aggressive and fierce she is on this event. It's like she's a member of the Fierce Five. <laughs> how was she? I think it shows her maturity and her confidence and, and just how much she wants it be on this team this summer. Great arm placements for that connection. Solid combination there. She looks calm after a little bit of a little bit of a blip on that pike front to open, but since then, relentless. You can tell her arm positions are so precise, so perfect after each element. Really helps her get her chest up. Have no deductions there. It's gonna be a round off Arabian double front, originated by Carly Patterson. Nice beam set. Very solid. Again, like we mentioned, a little balance check to start off the routine, but pulls it back on for a solid set, and, and, and she did her job. That's exactly what she wanted to get up there and do. And the appeal of Ali Raceman is just routines and all around days like this. You know, we saw a tiny bit of doubt on that Aminar on vault. She's solid, and I think what else she could bring to this United States Olympic team is her leadership skills. She was the captain in 2012, and I think the team could really benefit from having a veteran like Ali on the team. Looking at the end of United States, Jeffrey Gluckstein's routine seems a little bit unhappy with that performance but again kept it moving Lori Hernandez up next on beam we talked about Ali attacking the beam and, and fierce and I think Lori even does this times 10 <laughs> What do you think about the Leo, Sam? We, I mean, we talked about rhinestones on rhinestones on rhinestones. I'm loving it. It's a little bit different. Obviously not your typical red, white, and blue leotard, but I think it stands out and it's very feminine looking and I really appreciate it. And on screen, it, it looks a little different than it does on person. It basically just looks like arms of m armor to me from across the arena. I mean, when the lights hit that, it's like boom, boom, boom. They just want everyone to know they're bulletproof and they're coming for the rest of the world. Score in for Raceman, 14-8, 8-7 execution. Nice combination. One thing that Hernandez has gained international notoriety for is the attention to detail in the choreography and also coupling it wow. with combinations like that. It looked smooth. The extension all the way through to her toes. Every single layout, every back handspring. 
likes how she takes her time on that sheep jump. Puts it alone, so not worrying about any combination. She was the junior national champion and really jumped into the senior scene effortlessly and seamlessly. seamlessly. It's like she's been here for years. Talked about that switch half. When you're in a pinch, it's hard to get that full extension while rotating your body, but follows it up with a switch ring. Impeccable landing. I love that two foot landing comes down, very reminiscent of Kyla Ross. Flip flop, flip flop, double pike. You could tell Solid. she didn't really get the full rise and rebound off the beam, but again, so good at getting her chest up at the end. I thought this one was a little low. We're gonna check it out again. See what you're talking about. Patient, and yep, see her shoulders went right back, but she knows she has to compress, pull a little harder. She could get a little bit more height off the beam. Exactly what you're saying, Evan. She could get her chest up a little bit more on the landing. But look at that smile. She's had a great day on all four events. And we haven't seen a perfect beam set from today from the USA girls, but it's been great. And you got to have something to work for. It's a long summer, like we continue to mention. And this is the start of a very exciting year for them. Brittany Rogers of Canada, probably my favorite event to watch her on has a great long body line, kind of changes the way she taps into elements. The girls behind us just yelled, go everyone. <laughs> really wanting the entire competition to do well, USA. Is that what they meant by everyone? I think so. Okay. That's what I took <laughs> it as. Everyone, it means go us, I don't know. Probably just us, <laughs> mostly us. Rogers underway here. Stalled her full. Ooh, wow. Get, takes it to undergrip. Oh. And that was that was something that I know she didn't do in NCAA season. So pulling out uh, elements from her experience and bag of tricks. I don't think I've ever actually seen that. Again, here, watch the reach. She was close. Needed a little bit more extension throughout those shoulders. Some go-go gadget arms would have been useful there. Couldn't quite get her dowel over the bar. But again, she's jumping from the NCAA season to the elite season. It's going to take a little bit practice to get all of her difficulty back. Rikna to stall her into a Takachev. Interesting technique on that pack salto. Kind of lost the momentum, so she has to push away even harder. Starting to get a rhythm back here. Nice position on that double layout. Not her best set, but again, she is hoping to have a long summer as well. And to know what she needs to work on at this point in the season, I think is a good thing for her. Taking a look at the final competitor in this flight of trampoline athletes, it's Dmitry Ushakov. Triple front half out, double pike Rudy out. Very precise form and shapes in the air. Not traveling right over that X. Wow. This is very clean. Really methodical approach there. This is Courtney McGregor of New Zealand. I've seen her a lot tonight. Pike full in, soft through the knees, but got the chest up, kept it moving. Score in for Lori Hernandez. 15-2-5. That includes an 8-8-5 execution score. I'd like to see a set up a little bit more on that double pike. These girls are also not only trying to win all around tonight or be 
you know, place in the all around tonight. They're trying to qualify for the event finals, which is tomorrow. Yep, we'll be bringing that action to you live here in the Pacific time zone at 6 p.m. PacRimChamps.com slash live. Courtney McGregor finishing up the competition for New Zealand. Some good difficulty in there. Taking a look at the last pass, double tuck. Looks for that landing. She gets her chest up a little bit more on that set than she did on the double pike, and it paid off from her landing. Simone Biles up next on beam, and she's looking to close out another title here at the Pacific Rim Championships. Simone Biles mounting and one big test, I think, right off the top. Squat turn, two and a half, called the Humphrey. Brani gets her chest up very quick on that. Keeps the routine moving, adding a little bit of Brazilian flair to match her floor routine. Rising wow. even higher in the second layout. And one thing about Simone Biles that separates her from the rest of the field, she doesn't really need to prepare or set up at the end of the beam. She gets to where she needs to go and she's already moving into that first flip flop. And, and she you couldn't even tell that she was crooked in the going into the first layout and pulled it back on flawlessly and that is what makes a great beam worker. See that split half, that back leg came up nicely, connecting it to a back pike. Front aerial, tiny bit of foot movement between there. It'll be interesting to see if the judges take anything, but flawless execution of the wolf jump that followed. And wow. that's that. Again, <laughs> producing flawless gymnastics, nearly perfect. It's really amazing, Evan, that she can continue year after year competition. And we're going to check it out one more time. Marta thing in its entirety. Marta anxiously watching on the side. She has to be blown away by Simone's ability as well. You know, not only physical ability, but mental ability to be able to continue to be at the top of her game, not just to get to the top, but to stay there as well. And the blip, you know, in her all around program, if you put the magnifying glasses, I'm sure Marta and the other members of the national team staff are looking at, it was Vault. Vault was probably where she showed the biggest opening and execution. But, you know, I have to say, I think this is the most complete three event program. So looking at floor, bars, and beam, I think this is her best ev combined effort on those three events that we've seen in maybe two years. And it's good practice. We mentioned that a goal of this meet is to stay healthy and to stay consistent. And she was able to prove that. And all of the USA girls so far have been able to do just that, which is a great mark for them in the eyes of the selection committee. Do you know they started thinking about this Olympic team, not just at this meet, but starting last year? Talked about the rise of Lori wow. Hernandez's dismount lacking a little bit, but Simone Biles just propels herself off of that, getting a look at Marta Caroli. Mihai Breshin, Ali Raisman's coach right there, also congratulating her. Look at that Barani again. Just tiny bit low, but she brings it up nicely, and it's a skill that's worth enough. She's U.S. girls waiting for their final teammate to go. It's Brenda Dowell in the sixth spot. You can see they're a little bit more loose now that the competition is over, able to relax a bit, knowing they, they did their job. Brenna hit her event, the event that the selection committee is most concerned about, her bar routine. Still waiting for Bile score. They're probably talking about the connection we mentioned. It was a little bit slow. She had a very slight foot movement that 
you know, shouldn't really be a connection, but she kept her arms moving, and that's maybe where the confusion lies. All right, Evan, I got a question for you. Name that Olympic team. Who do you think the five girls are going to be? I'm going to start with Simone Biles. Oh, I, I wasn't going to include her. I'm just kidding. Ooh, Kurt, well, we'll <laughs> just you, kidding. Sam. Just kidding. Of course. Keep going. Gabby Douglas. Okay. Allie Raceman. Okay. Madison Koshin. Okay. Lori Hernandez. Wow. I mean, you shouldn't be that shocked. I, I'm not shocked, but there are so many good girls, and, and I would argue that I think we can't count out Maggie Nichols. I think that she has proven herself the past few years, and she has been rock-solid all-around competitor, and I, I think that she's going to make this team. I'm not sure who out of the girls you named are going to be out, but I my money is on Maggie Nichols. Dowell mounting with a punch front on. There's a Kochakova into the flip-flop layout. Tiny bit of flex feet on those flight elements, but square on the beam. And it's interesting, Sam, how history almost mirrors itself a bit. Your 2008 Olympic teammate, Bridget Sloan, actually had a uh, knee injury mm -hmm. in the spring of the Olympic year and took her a little bit to come back, didn't necessarily show everything at nationals, but was ready to go at trials. So it'll be interesting to see how Nichols kind of mirrors that. And I think it actually benefited her in the long run. It gave her a little bit more of a rest time and um, able to recover. She was fresh. When she got back to full health, she was able to train fresh, and she wasn't burnt out. Tiny step back. Can't say that I'm a big fan of that pike jump from Brenna. Kind of leaves her chest down a little bit. Doesn't take it quite to the max. Her connections are a little bit sketchy. The rhythm is... A little bit slow. But again, Brenna Dowell not looking for her to be in a three-up, three-count situation on beam. So again, just adding to the credibility of her all-around efforts, Definitely. double pike. I mean, that's a great day for Brenna Dowell. She's got to be breathing a sigh of relief. Oh, she was Al nervous. Oh, Fong right there, so proud of her, coming back for redemption, and she just looks like a weight is lifted off of her shoulders. And I think even more proving to the selection committee, it was proving to herself that she deserves to be here and she's in contention for this Olympic team. Great day for Team USA. And I think that it's safe to say we're on the right track for these Olympic games. We'll come back with some final scores, but I can tell you Simone Biles, 9.050 in the execution department, resulting in a 15.55 final score on beam. Hang with us, folks. We'll be right back to wrap up.
For America's top female gymnasts, the road to Rio goes through San Jose. Witness history when the U.S. Olympic trials tumbles into Gymnastic City, USA. See the nation's best compete for a place on Team USA, July 8th and 10th. Tickets are on sale now through SAP Center Ticket Office or Ticketmaster.com. See the 2016 U.S. Olympic team crowned in San Jose. Ladies and gentlemen, wrapping up things with some all-around standings in first place. Surprise, surprise, Simone Biles, 62-4-5 in the all-around, followed by Ali Raceman, 59-9. And third was Lori Hernandez, 59.8. Huge, huge day for Team USA. And again, they have won this meet by a landslide. United States 243.2 followed by Canada 219.1 and Australia competing in an earlier session rounding out the top three with a 217.85 hang in here folks you can catch the award ceremony streaming live with you for now signing off for Samantha Peshik I'm Evan Heider remember to follow along and after the meet has concluded using hashtag pack 16 we'll be back tomorrow night for the event finals and the senior men and women at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Thanks for joining us for the 2016 Pacific Rim Gymnastics Championships brought to you by Hershey's. Peace out. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we begin the award ceremonies for today's competition of the 2016 Pacific Rim Championships presented by Hershey's. We begin with the senior women's competition in trampoline. Presenting the awards, please welcome President and CEO of USA Gymnastics, Steve Penny. The Senior Director of Hershey's Chocolate, Melinda Lewis and the president of the Pacific Alliance of National Gymnastics Federations, Jean-Paul Caron.
in third place. Earning the bronze medal with a score of 52.695 for Canada, Samantha Sendel. Winning the silver medal with a score of 53.165 for USA, Shaley Donovan. And with a top score of 54, 54.24, earning the gold medal for the 2016 Pacific Rim Championships Senior Women's Trampoline Competition from Canada, Samantha Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the National Anthem of Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2016 Pacific Rim Championships Senior Women's Trampoline Champion. Now for the award ceremony in senior men's trampoline competition. Please welcome our award winners. In third place and earning the bronze medal with a score of 57.475, representing New Zealand, Dylan Schmidt. Winning the silver medal with a score of 58.295. From USA, Jeffrey Gluckstein. And with the top score of 59.97, earning the gold medal of the 2016 Pacific Rim Championships Senior Men's Trampoline Competition, representing Russian Federation, Dmitry Ushakov.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthem of Russian Federation. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2016 Pacific Rim Championships Senior Men's Trampoline Champions. And now for the award ceremony in the junior women's all around competition. Please welcome our award winners. Finishing in third place and earning the bronze medal with a score of 53.1. Representing Japan, Soyoka Hanawa. Your third place finisher from Mexico, earning the bronze medal, Luis Lopez. Winning the silver medal with a score of 53.5. Representing Japan, Natsumi Hanashimi. The 2016 Pacific Rim Championships Junior Women's All-Around Champion, winning the gold medal with a score of 54.55. For Japan, Kiko Kuwachima. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthem of Japan.
Ladies and gentlemen, your 2016 Pacific Rim Championships Junior Women's All-Around Champions. We continue now with the all-around awards for the senior women's competition of the 2016 Pacific Rim Championships. In third place with a score of 55.2, representing Japan, Naji Kajita. Winning the silver medal with a score of 59.9 for USA, Ali Raceman. The 2016 Pacific Rim Championship Senior Women's All-Around Champion earning the gold medal with a top score of 62.45 from USA, Simone Biles. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the National Anthem of United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2016 Pacific Rim Championships Senior Women All-Around Champions.
And now for the award ceremony in artistic women's team competition. Please welcome our award winners. In third place with a score of 217.85, earning the bronze medal, Team Australia. Winning the silver medal with a score of 219.1, Team Canada. And with a score of 243.2, the 2016 Pacific Rim Championships Women's Team Champion, Team USA. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the National Anthem of United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2016 Pacific Rim Championships Women's Team Champions. This concludes tonight's competition. Please make plans to join us tomorrow for men's and women's event finals. Doors for the junior competition open at 11 a.m. and then 5 p.m. again for the senior competition. Tickets are still available here at Xfinity Arena box office. Thank you for supporting USA Gymnastics and have a safe trip home.